Hi. Hi. I'm Fleischer, and I'm the editor of the NCTE's Principles and Practice imprint. And today you're going to get a chance to learn about one of the books in the imprint by hearing from its author, Melinda McVie Orzulak. First, a little bit about principles and practice. All the books in the imprint are designed to offer teachers some concrete illustrations of effective classroom practices that are based in some of the various NCTE briefs and policy statements. The books all have a similar design. Each one discusses the research on a specific topic, links the research to an NCTE brief or policy statement, and then demonstrates how those principles come alive in practice. And the books are grouped together in strands that are based on particular policy statements from adolescent literacy, to writing in today's classrooms, to literacy assessment, to literacy in the disciplines, to reading instruction, and most recently, to teaching English language learners. Today, we'll chat with Melinda, who is the author of a book in the English language learner strand. And the book is titled, Understanding Language, Supporting ELL Students in Responsive ELA Classrooms. Melinda is an assistant professor at Bradley University in Peoria, Illinois where she teaches future teachers and serves as the English education coordinator. So welcome, Melinda. Hey. Um, I wonder if you could start by telling us a little bit about the book and what motivated you to write it. Yeah, so really, um, this book is a response to what I wish I had known in my early years of teaching English language arts, um, especially having language learners of various types. So I, I started to understand over time the many strengths that having um, multilingual students in my classroom brought to my actual teaching of English language learners. So the book was really my way of, of thinking about everything I had learned over time from research, from practice, from really wonderful experienced teachers and finding ways to bring that alive for other teachers who might be also looking for those kinds of resources. That's great. So what do you hope that the teachers who read this are gonna take from the book? Yeah, um, I hope that they develop a more complex understanding of language and how that plays out in our English language arts classrooms. Um, to really build their repertoire, to think about language in all the many complex ways, to think about myths about language that we might have, to think about all the distinctions between oral and written language, academic and social language, and how all of those different kinds of languages in our classroom are, can be really used as assets in English language arts. So thinking about um, language and culture and all the joys that can ha come from having a multilingual English language arts classroom, those are um, things that I've learned over over time that are something that we can really expand on in English language arts to really benefit all students. So um, benefit our language learners, but also all of our learners in our classroom. You know, that was one of the things that um, I really took from the book that I thought there was this joy about it. You mm -hmm. know, the joy about having yes. students with multiple languages in the classroom and um, these myths that we carry with us. Yeah. So as, a, as a regular ELA teacher, there's a little bit of oh my gosh, I've got five um, English language learners in my classroom, what do I do with them? So right. that was something that really struck me about the book. I wonder if you could say something either about one of the myths or about one of the ideas that yeah. we can do to, to help um, yeah. our regular students right. are, you know, the, who are not English language learners work with our other important students who are who are English language learners. Right, um, yeah, I think there's a lot of different um, myths that we can sometimes bring to the classroom. One is that, you know, um, being ESL or being an English language learner means there's a problem, right? So this more deficit-based um, understanding. And I know, you know, as a teacher, that can come from a sense of not having the resources to know what to do when we have new kinds of students in our classroom. Um, but I think um, one of the myths that comes with that is that, um, for example, a, the, the test that you might get, the test score you might get for your students, is only showing one small snapshot of what they know about language. And what we do know about multilingual students is they actually bring often a more complex understanding of language because they are negotiating language in different ways in the classroom. So to help them understand all the strengths that they already do have in our classroom and also for us to understand how that knowledge that they bring to the classroom is a wonderful um, tool to help um, ourselves understand language better but also it deepens our understanding of the literature we, re we read the ways we understand writing with our students um, so i think that's the biggest you know area that i think we often have a lot of myths is this idea of the intersections between language and culture as being potentially a problem, but to instead see that as an asset, something we can build on um, to really understand all the, the benefits for um, the language learning environment in general. Yeah, in a world in which we push um, students whose 
only language is English to have another language, right? right. Yeah. But then yeah. You kids who come in with a couple of languages that that's a deficit in some right. way. Problem in some yeah. Way. One of the quotes that I've always loved, which I, of course I don't remember the exact <laughs> attribution, but this idea that when you hear someone speaking with an accent, I think sometimes we might come to that with a deficit view and say, oh, that person doesn't understand English very much. But I think instead of reframing in a more asset-based view to realize, especially for many of us who are more um, monolingual or not quite fluent in multiple languages, um, to realize that when you're hearing that accent, that actually indicates someone who already has another language that they really understand and use and who is also using English, if you can understand it, and you're a monolingual English speaker, very proficiently. So that means someone who has a pretty complicated understanding understanding of language and understanding that in a, in a positive way um, that we can learn from as well. Great. So, well, thank you. And I thank you for the book because I know that I learned a lot from it and it made me think a lot about the ways I approach second language learners in my own class. So I think it's a wonderful book for teachers to think about what they could do. So thank you so much for joining us. You guys are interested and you people are listening to buying this book. It's a really wonderful book. So thank, thank you. you.